Welcome to the Member Series Spotlight. Thanks for joining me on the Red Chairs, Craig Carey. Thanks for having me. Crown Money and a member of BNI Storm. Greatest. Uh, we're number 10 in the country, so you're doing number pretty good. Pretty good. Love the statistics. Yeah. Um, so, to get started, I suppose, tell me a little bit about your BNI journey today, because you are also a member of the year for BNI Adelaide. Yes, well, thanks for reminding me. Yeah. I feel such a treasure to remind God. Yeah. I feel so good. Sits in my office, very proud. Yeah. Um, my BNI journey started. My uh, partner at the time, now wife, uh, Nicola, she was uh, looking to join. She was running a fitness business and she was yeah. looking to join uh, BNI Bayside. Yeah. And uh, she said, Come along. And um, yeah, I was still working in the, in the corporate world and then decided to, I was slowly transitioning into finance and working for my brother's company. And yeah, so she said, Come along. And I really, really resonated with, I guess, the statistics, and I'm in finance, so, so I like numbers, and uh, I think what gets measured gets improved, so that was, a, that was a big thing for me, that you guys measured all the reporting statistics, the results that came across, the referrals that got passed, so uh, I really liked it from the get-go, and how short, sharp, and timed it was, so um, unfortunately there was no spaces for a mortgage broker at that time, particular time, yeah. so... I spoke to Simon Derek Roberts and uh, we put a sort of a plan in place to potentially start a chapter and um, that was a lot harder than, uh, than what we thought with just other people not sort of you know committing to as much yeah. as what I would have liked. Uh, and then I just went on the waiting list and an opportunity came up with BNI Storm and I think they had 20 something plus mortgage brokers wow. uh, go for the uh, go for the seat uh, and, and in won. that room and they dialed it back down to six yeah. um, and then said whoever brings the most value I guess which is fair enough to the yeah. table. Uh, over that um, two weeks, we'll, uh, we'll get the seat, and uh, so I worked really hard, and I had sort of had things in place ready to go to ensure that I could put my best foot forward to um to, to take that spot and have a look back since. Well, it's true they do say that there are three categories that um, you either have to die or retire for that seat to open up. That is one of the top tier categories. So yeah. I did get told that I could be waiting a while, but I was happy to wait. But an opportunity came up within about three weeks of wow. uh, of yeah. that, and. Uh, I jumped at the opportunity and uh, yeah, really sort of wanted to show, I guess, my worth to the to the chapter. Yeah, uh, I think that was really important because they'd been through a couple of mortgage brokers before, so I didn't want them to make the, uh, you know, a mistake in who they were going to select next. And um, yeah, so for me, it was, uh, I guess, yeah, it was on the line in relation to, I guess, what I could bring to the table for that particular chapter, and uh, hopefully they've seen. Some value from it. Absolutely. Well, I don't think you would have been a member of the year if I hadn't. So, absolutely. Um, so, tell me what has been the most surprising thing that you've either learned or discovered since you've been a BNI member? The most interesting thing that's happened to your business? Um, look, for, for my, I, I just really, coming into BNI, like my expectations. Um, should have been a lot higher, but I was like, you know, if I just get my money back in the first year, yeah. um, which is what an investment could potentially have three grand after all the, uh, all the fees uh, and obviously the, the breakfast meetings and so forth, uh, I, I would be happy. I would do it again. I would go the second year if I made my money back. And I was so surprised by how quickly people, uh, I guess, took me into that chapter, uh, trusted me, liked me, respected me. Uh, from day one, and um, and by the end of the first year, I broke down the numbers, and I just went, oh my god, I just could not believe how much revenue was generated from BNI for my business, and the, and more so than just the the connections, not only from a business perspective, but also from a friendship perspective as well, yeah, uh, that I had made in that first twelve months. So um, yeah, I sort of said, well, you know, this is never going to um, never going to be another opportunity like this, and. Yeah. Um, yeah, decided to uh, to stick around, and here we are for coming up to my fifth year. But coming up to a dying year, then to, there you go. Coming up to my fifth yeah. year, and um, it's just getting better and better. I mean, you keep a very cool group, which is fantastic. I think we've got a really great culture in BNI Storm, um, and that's testament to all the members that have worked so hard to get it to that stage. Um, but but I love our chapter, I really do, and, um, and I just love trying to give back in any way, shape, or form I can because. As we know, the more we give, the more we get. Absolutely. Who um, has surprised you by passing you a referral? Who is the member in the in your chapter that you thought may never pass you a referral or have the capacity to that's given you a great referral? Um, that's interesting because I'm going to, like, it's not a member, it's a visitor. And yeah. I actually get a lot of a lot of referrals and a lot of business from visitors, believe it or not, and that's probably the last people I thought 
that will do that. But we've been able to, I guess, uh, as a visitor comes in, we've been able to sort of make a connection in that short amount of time. And I guess it's just the BNI philosophy. When I was president, I wanted to get around to all the visitors, yeah. introduce myself, I'd send them an email saying welcome uh, before they would even uh, attend. So I think there was some trust already built there, which was yeah. fantastic. And um, yeah, I, I've actually so surprised how much business I've actually got from visitors yeah. and then that referral effect after that from those visitors like a third tier yeah. so that, that's probably been the most surprising even though it's not a member no, would you like me to say a member no that's okay. fine rather you were honest visitors yeah Visit, yeah well and i think the thing is too that often um you know people sometimes think they're getting invited to be and i like to visit a and i chapter to join mm. but it's been my experience that actually you know when i invite people to visit is because I want them to meet specific people in yes. the room where I think there's an opportunity for a connection there. Sometimes they end up applying yes. um, and getting approved, but uh, I always say to them, I, I invited you to one meeting. What you choose to do with that after that is entirely up right. to you. Yeah. Um, if you were giving advice to another mortgage broker who was looking at applying for another chapter, what piece of advice would you give to them? Oh my God, do it yesterday fill out an application do whatever you can do get on a wait list i'm sure there's probably not many um opens yeah. for mortgage brokers as you know but do whatever you can to, to try and get on a list it's been uh, the best thing that i've done from a marketing perspective because that's how i look at being for me this is my marketing arm i don't market my business whatsoever i don't need to because i've got 35 other business professionals that do that for me um, so my advice to any mortgage broker out there, if you're looking to develop more connections, more referral partners, more business, get on a list, get on a wait list and bug the director until you, uh, until until you, you get a seat. Because <laughs> that's, that's what I did essentially. Yeah. Um, how has B&I made you better as a mortgage broker? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a really great question. And how I like to look at that is that you sort of need to live to an expectation within BNI because you know you so everyone trusts and likes and respects each other. So you almost um, you put up there in the lights to say that hey, I'm referring you this person that doesn't even know you because I know that you're going to look after him. So the expectations for you to deliver a perfect service and a result. You know, not only for the client, but for the for the member that obviously introduced that particular client is, is really high for me. So mm -hmm. I think it's just enabled me to ensure that I'm always delivering a, a quality service, mm -hmm. getting great feedback from that particular referral, which hopefully can then be passed back on to the member and or the referral partner that where it's come from. So yeah, yeah I think it's 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 keeping you accountable yeah. to ensure that you're delivering a, an amazing service. Yeah. So you and I are very similar in that I think we like accountability models oh, yes. and we like statistics. Um, there are other human beings on the planet that perhaps don't like those things as much. Sure, sure. So uh, what would you say to someone who comes and sees the structure of the meeting and hears that, you know, um, we measure activity and, you know, how much people are giving to the room um, and thinks that it's too structured? Too structured. That's very interesting. Um, look, from my perspective, everyone's been to a network. I was actually thinking about this in my own car. I said, "What? How is BNI different to like a normal? Let's just catch up network meetings." Right? Yeah. And and that's what I thought BNI was when my partner first um, introduced me to BNI, and that's what I thought I was coming to. And I was quickly surprised. I thought, "Oh, great! You know, it's another you know walk in, you know, have a chat to a few people, a few drinks, and nothing gets done. Right? Yeah. Nothing ever gets done in those. Um, and I've never received business from us, and that's what I thought it was. So I was, I was quite surprised that um, BNI was obviously structured differently. But I mean, if if that particular person is wanting to, you know, develop and grow their business, um, then I would suggest that they just need to put up with it. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but it's look, it's it's um, you get out whatever you put into BNI, and I think that's 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 really important to um, to note. But I mean, yes. We get caught up in the statistics, and it's only important because I think, as I said, I go back to what gets measured gets improved. Yeah. Now there are people to do that, but you know we've got the application now the BNI Connect, and it just makes things so much easier. So um, from that perspective, you know, although you know there will be results uh, presented, like I don't think that a person would get so bogged down in the particular statistics um, as long as they're doing it. No, look, that, I think that makes sense to me. You know, in business, we have budgets and finance targets that we have yeah. to hit and things 
personally, I don't think it's any different, but sometimes people worry about it. But yeah. like I said, it's what, what gets measured gets done. Yeah, and, and I was that was my biggest concern coming to be, am I going to be able to refer enough business? Yeah. You know, that was, even though I thought I had a great network um, that I probably could connect other people to, um, everyone's concern or a lot of people's concern coming into BNI and would be, you know, how am I going to refer people to business? Everyone has that same sort of mindset and thought process, but once you're in there, it'll just flow naturally. Um, and once you start developing the connections and the friendships within their membership groups, that that, that particular, um, it just dies away, that, that worry or concern about um, being able to refer people to business. And the statistics, obviously. They just take care of themselves. It does, yeah. Um, what is your one piece of advice to be in my members that are perhaps um, trying to get their head around it and are much newer at the game of BNI than yeah. you are? Um, most people go into BNI thinking, and, and me too, myself, like I'm here to generate more revenue, more mm -hmm. clients, more business, and so forth. And and um, that's great to walk into a BNI thinking that, but your mindset must change because when my mindset changes to I'm just going to give as much as I can to this chapter, and that's when I became president. You know, because yeah. your first year, you sort of, you know, you're feeling yourself out, and you're developing the relationships, um, and obviously building that respect with the other members. But it was really when I was, you know, got asked to be president was when I really developed the philosophy of I'm just going to give, yeah. I'm going to build the group, I'm going to give as much as I can to ensure this group is successful. And when I my mindset changed from thinking about how much can I receive from BNI to how much can I give? Uh, the monetary and the referrals and everything else just sort of took care of itself. Yeah. And that's my sort of philosophy on life. You know, it was great because I'm the more you give, the more you get. And that's obviously a nice philosophy. So I'm a big believer of just giving as much as you can because at the end of the day, it'll look after itself and it'll come back to you twofold. Um, so, and then, you know, and then we're four years down the track and I actually met Rick Jordan the other, the other week and said, you know, I was sort of, not struggling, but I was like, what am I what am I giving to be in I now? Yeah. You know, and I sort of felt I'd lost my identity. And then I won that award, um, which I was very surprised at, so thank you so much. But I won the award and it almost just reinvigorated my my ability to want to give even more. Yeah. So it was it was good. It was I was I was sort of in that and John um, also felt the same at that around the same mark. Yeah. Around that sort of four year mark, he was like, you know. What, what can I give? What else can I do? Yeah. Um, and he's been really great as a mentor as well. So. Yeah, he's really Yeah, he's, he's really good. So he sort of reinvigorated me, that shout, and then, you know, obviously winning the award as well sort of like, put me in, and I was so keen, and then a bit of COVID hit. So yeah. it's been hard to sort of, you know, try and do as much as I want to do, but uh, hopefully we're going to get back to um, back to first to face. Hopefully very soon. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Well, Craig, thank you very much for joining me on no the no Red problem. Chairs. Um, if you want to visit Craig at b and Storm, one of the top chapters in the country, um, the link to go visit his meeting will be in the comments below the videos, uh, or you can find it on the b and Adelaide North website. Thanks very much. No worries. Thanks for having me. My Appreciate pleasure. it.